Oh, Sammy, Sam, Sam. This is my formal request for Sam Altman to stop scaring people um, about AGI. Hey there, I'm V. Dries and I have a master's degree in educational technology and I love to study the intersection of human relationships with technology and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Either Sam Altman knows a whole lot more than he's sharing with us. Um, you know, obviously he probably does, right? He's the head of one of the largest AI and tech companies out there at this time. Or he's totally full of it. <laughs> and that seems to be the sentiment online today. And for those of you who are a little bit unfamiliar with AGI is, it is simply AI, but more capabilities, more abilities to reason and perform cognitive tasks more like a human and not necessarily just narrow focused tasks like the AI that we use on a daily basis through LLMs. And the notion of AGI, right? An AI that has cognitive abilities and functions much like a human is, is just a scary thought. It's a scary notion for many people. And yet one of the main principles of OpenAI is transparency. So we have Sam Altman often going out to these, you know, conferences, these conversations, these discussions about AI. And he, and he likes to have these philosophical conversations about what AGI and the integration of it with society would look like. Um, and a lot of people push back against these conversations uh, because he brings up things like abundance, resource management, jobs, um, all things that others are very passionate about. And most recently, he was featured at a conversation with MIT's president when he said this. I think 10 years ago, I probably had a more naive conception of AI as this like creature that was going to be off doing stuff or this like, you know, magic super intelligence in the sky that would like figure things out and rain money on us. And we were going to try to like figure out how to live our lives, but it was all sort of confusing. And, and now I think of it much more like any other technological revolution, hopefully the biggest and the best and the most important and the greatest benefits. But, you know, we have like a new tool in the tech tree of humanity and people are using it to create amazing things. I think it will continue to get way more capable and way more autonomous over time. But even then, like, I think it's just going to integrate into society in a in an important and transformative way, but something that is somehow going to be, you know, I think we, like if AGI got built tomorrow and you asked me what would happen the next day, 10 years ago, I would have said, can't really imagine it. It should be just this like absolute transformation, singularity, everything's different all at once. And I now think it won't really be like that at all. Which, which is, okay, so this is what he's saying, right? He's saying that he doesn't think it's going to Thanos overnight um, with AGI's integration into society. So we won't see a mass wipeout of jobs, a mass wipeout. Taking over the human's world. Things that we are familiar with and how society operates, which is good to hear because as he said, that's what he suspected was this technology was going to exponentially grow to the point and so fast um, that it was going to take society by, by storm and shock, uh, which would not be a good thing. We don't like surprises. Um, anthropologically speaking, as a society, we don't do well with big shifts in our paradigm paradigms that fast. But we haven't really gotten to the part that I think a lot of people are most freaked out about because this was a little bit um, humbling. I can appreciate the notion that some of the biggest brains working on this type of tech are saying it's not going to be in a singular moment, a Thanos-like phenomenon where all of a sudden, right? That, that feels good, but let's continue. So you think in some, in some extent you were optimistic, but you couldn't have placed yourself in the current moment in either way, and it's the same for... I, I don't know, like optimistic or pessimistic. I think I was just like somewhat wrong. I mean, there were ways in which it was too optimistic and too pessimistic at the same time um you know if we make like if we make something that is like you know as smart as all of the super smart students here uh that's a great accomplishment in some sense there's already a lot of like smart people in the world so maybe things go faster um, maybe quality of life goes up maybe the economy cycles a little bit faster you know like if the rate of scientific discovery becomes 10 times faster than it is today i, I don't know how different that'll feel to us living through it okay that's really important because technology has been developing at lightning lightning speeds okay um and if we looked at a chart it would look much like an exponential curve going up uh, as far as the rapid development of technology, microchips, um, you know, all this sort of technology has become more compacted, but more capable. Uh, so it has been a wild ride, especially for someone like me who has just, I've loved technology since in, in its most, you know, stupid form of it, which is funny because we're seeing sort of resurgence of like fun tech coming back around. And that is all good and dandy. But I think what's worth focusing on from that clip is when he looks at the students and says, if we can make students as smart as you guys, that would be somewhat of an accomplishment. Um, my brain immediately went to like the way we learn. You see, our neurons work and fire in a really particular way. A lot of that is from watching and then doing, which I'm going to have a video on coming out pretty soon. I digress. Um, our brain loves to watch, loves to do, and loves to teach. Um, that's just kind of how we're wired as humans. So my, my hesitation when I hear something like this 
is if we do create this this super intelligence, right? Um, and, and maybe that's the wrong term. How about general intelligence? Something that is is competing with human cognizance, right? At what point when we're integrating this technology that can reason and do as humans, how many integrations of that into our generations will it take for us to become even more dumb? Um, because if you take away the ability to observe and do and teach skills, right? The sections of our brain, the neurons that fire when we watch, see and do don't get to connect, right? The synapses don't get to fire. And I'm worried with enough repetition of us as humans, a society not needing to have those synapses fire, we're going to devolve. Um, <laughs> is this, this is just a little thought. And as someone who has always appreciated and honored, you know, their curiosity, I can't help but wonder what that will be like in the future for societies. It's these philosophical conversations that I think scare the bejeebus out of folks, rightfully so, I think, because a lot of us are fixated on, you know, our purpose, right? Our lives and our future. And this sort of technology interferes with that primal instinct inside of us, I think. And it's those sorts of thoughts and worries and concerns about the world around us, right? That makes us uniquely human, um, but also uniquely doomer pilled in many respects, myself included. I find myself kind of going down these rabbit holes thinking about, you know, this kind of technology, right? Like in how I could leverage it, how I can use it best. And it's not always the most positive rabbit holes we find ourselves down. In another clip that has sort of gotten um, a lot of attention was Sam Altman talking about this sort of uh, um, nihilistic lack of hope that society seems to have lately. Um, so here's what he said about that. You opened asking about P Doom and the. Uh, for those that don't know, P Doom is like the Doom scale in relative to AI's development. Um, it's essentially just like the Doomerism related to AI. So level of doomerism in society right now, I think the way we are teaching our young people that the world is totally screwed, that it's hopeless to try to solve problems, that all we can do is like sit in our bedrooms in the dark and think about how awful we are, is a really deeply unproductive streak. And I hope MIT is different than a lot of other college campuses. I assume it is, but you all need to like make it part of your life mission to fight against this. Prosperity, abundance, um, you know, a better life next year, a better life for our children. That is the only path forward. That is the only way to have a functioning society. And there will always be people who want to sit around and say, we shouldn't do AI because we may burn a little more carbon, or we shouldn't do AI because, you know, we haven't fully addressed bias. And it turns out a couple years later, we made a lot of progress on both of those things. And the anti-progress streak, the anti, like, people deserve a great life streak, who are usually the people that have quite a lot of privilege in this place, um, is something I hope you all fight against. Wow. That was actually a little bit more insightful than I thought it would be. But that last sentence. Um, so I think a lot of people like us are sitting in our, you know, generally we're okay kind of vibes. Um, look at this and, and partially agree and then partially disagree because we can see that there are societal factors obviously at play um, that, that contribute to the doomerism outside of technology, right? It's like, you know, the economy's the job market is messed up. Um, climate change is occurring fast. We have wars on several fronts. There's a lot of reasons to be doomer pilled. There's a term called survivance, and it's like surviving and endurance, and these two things have to coexist to get through life, right? I get that. But I do think a lot of people struggle with this, this idea that we right now are working to struggle. We're barely enduring, right? And and we need to break out of that. And I think what Sam Altman is saying here with his, his argument that, you know, we have to fight against this doomerism because AI ultimately will be a net good. And I do want to believe that sentiment. Truly, as an optimist, I do believe that AI, when paired with society, can be a net positive. But it's really going to be up to not Sam Altman, but I think, you know, governments um, in order to, to leverage this technology for its citizens. And I, I just don't think that's going to happen soon. So when we're talking about AGI, artificial general intelligence that can compete with humans, actions, skills and behaviors, we're getting into a very Orwellian kind of future, right? Because this sort of technology needs to be accessible by all folks. And the trajectory that I see it developing in feels like it's not going to be that because ultimately it'll be, I think, up to the governments and not Sam. I don't think Sam's going to have the ultimate say with how this technology is going to be used in society. And so when we talk about a new technology and new events that seem pretty large, pretty significant, 
um, that's where we're going to be running into a lot of skeptics. And I think it's completely valid. And it also solidifies this channel because I like to explore technology. I like to talk about technology, add commentary. I like to consider the socio and cultural ramifications of technology and not just think about the pure profits that can be made. I like to think about this stuff on a philosophical level. Again, my background is in educational technology and new media. So I like to think about the relationship between tech and human. We've passed the three-year mark on ChatGPT3 uh, API being released to the public. We've seen a lot of advancements since then, and I think it's only gonna exponentially grow. But again, we started this video because the reviews are mixed. A lot of people think AGI is either overhyped or super scary, right? Um, and, and that's something that we should be grappling with as a society, especially if it's gonna be real um, in our lives, this, this generation. But I don't like doomerism. I don't wanna give up on our future. I think there's so much to live for um, and it's it could be fatal for society. It's truly a defeatist attitude to have. Um, and I know there's so many, so many factors playing a role on, on doomerism in our society. Society, straight up. There's too many things to be bummed about um, and to be discouraged by. But again, maybe we should stop telling humans that they're gonna be replaced by AI and instead integrated with AI. I don't know. I don't have the solutions. I simply like to think about this stuff. Anyway, I'll leave you with that because I think that was a lot to chew on. I don't know. How do we fight this sort of psychological destructiveness of, of doomerism, right? And if we keep doubling down on doomerism, is it like gonna be a self-fulfilling prophecy <laughs> and we're gonna have some catastrophic moment with AI. I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, thank you for hanging out listening to my silly thoughts about AGI and Sam Altman's most recent comments about it uh, because it got us thinking and I want you to think. I want you to be curious. Get out there. Be curious. Go explore some stuff. Anyway, I'm out of here. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>